Hey, what's up all you addicts out there? We're super excited to bring to you another how-to video series. And this time we were able to get out with Kevin Gray from Kevin Gray's Guide Service, also one of our new addicted guides. So we're super excited about that. We got out on the river with Kevin, we filmed four videos, and it's kind of just like attacking fall fisheries in general, just kind of from the bank, approaching it from different, different perspectives. And you filmed four videos, the first one being reading water. So kind of talk about a little bit setting up this video here. Right, so we, we got into it talking about reading water, locating uh, Chinook and Coho, and I tried to keep it as simple, straightforward as possible. Um, especially, you know, I talked about water levels, Perfect. Uh, right now we've, we've got low clear water, so we are on site on a river that's low and clear. Um, and I just kind of went step by step on what to look for um, when you are going out pursuing fishing under these conditions. Cool. So if you guys want, please comment below. Let us know how you like this video. Let us know what you guys want to see in the future for future videos. And don't forget to subscribe because this is video number one of a four video series. We'll release one a day after you see this very first one come out. So make sure you guys hit this little subscribe button that's going to pop up right here. And enjoy this first video, Reading Water with Kevin Gray. Hello there, Kevin Gray here with Kevin Gray's Guide Service. Uh, we're gonna be talking about locating Chinook and Coho and what water to find them in and how to attack the water. First thing I do, if I wanna locate Chinook and Coho, I I automatically, personally, I think holes. I'm gonna look for areas where the river will either slow the fish down or even stop them for a period of time. Um, so usually, you know, a hole can be anywhere from five to 15 or even 20 feet deep. Um, so once I've located an area that looks promising like a hole, I will then immediately start looking to see if fish are rolling or jumping. That's usually an indicator, yeah, fish are around. The best way to find fish in low, clear conditions like we have right now is to look for areas they feel comfortable. Deep water, water with a choppy surface or even white water or boulders to, to uh, conceal where they're hiding. Um, the other thing, and it's a lot of work, is gonna be to cover a lot of water, uh, whether you're on the bank or in a boat. Um, so say we're going out and we're gonna bank fish a tributary. I, before I even get to the river, I try to plan out multiple places I'm gonna stop along the way and fish because you may pick a spot and there's nothing there. Well, you don't wanna put all your chips in on one spot that doesn't have fish. So pick three, four, five, six different places you can hit along the way throughout the day that might most likely have fish. In the fall, you have both fall Chinook and coho returning to the rivers at the same time. That doesn't necessarily mean that the fish are gonna be separate at all times. Low clear water like we have right here, and you have a nice deep hole separated by rapids at the top, smoothing out, dropping into 10 or 12 foot of water for a long stretch. This is a perfect spot for salmon that are coming up the river to settle in and rest. This time of year on their spawning migration, salmon are pretty much focused on energy conservation prior to spawning. So they're not gonna wanna expend a lot of energy. They're gonna move from hole to hole, resting in between on their way up river. So fall Chinook, the way I would attack it is to look for holes like this. Look for deeper water. They're a big fish, they need, they need room. They need a place to sit and rest, they like cover. So when I'm targeting fall Chinook, I'm gonna start looking for big holes. I'm gonna look for rollers. Those two things are gonna be the number one thing you use in locating Chanel. Coho, on the other hand, they'll, they'll be here as well. Coho, they're kind of like the in-between fish. They'll be in the holes. You'll find them in long flats, like down below. They'll be in eddies. We have an eddy here in the top of the hole. They'll be just about anywhere. Holes are one of the first places I'll start for coho. It's, you know, first thing in the morning, that's usually where they're gonna be sitting. But as the day goes on, I'll end up covering everything. Bobbers, twitching jigs, even some spinners, sometimes drift fishing bait. But as the coho enter the river, 
they'll tend to spread out and sometimes the Chinook will push them out of the holes. But water conditions like this, just bear in mind, you're gonna find them mixed together. When you do find fish, rollers, biters, or whatever, you're gonna wanna stay on those fish until whatever you're using isn't working anymore. So you stop getting bit or until it seems like the fish may have moved on. There's no sense pounding on fish once you do find them and if they turn off, there's no sense staying too long and wasting a day on maybe not getting another bite. You weren't lying, dude. That was some like low, clear water. Yeah, it's it's no joke right now. It's we no need joke. Some rain. We need some rain. Yeah. But at least you guys were able to kind of see different pieces of water and kind of how to attack them. Super, super excited. With that being said, now that people kind of know a little bit about reading water, and hopefully some of you advanced guys learn some stuff, because I know every time I'm around a new fisherman, we all approach things differently. So you learn different things from different anglers and the way they fish things. Exactly, right? So in this next one, you talked about bait and like kind of quick curing some eggs and that kind of stuff. Got into some pretty good detail. Um, I showed different bait riggings illustrated, um, different combinations of bait that I use for Chinook and Coho in the fall. Um, also did a quick curing tutorial. So we kind of covered everything needed to get set up and uh, get those baits on the hooks and fish ready to Ready to freaking poke a Chinook or a Coho. With that being said, you better hit this little subscribe button so you know when video two comes out. We love to have you guys on our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for tuning in. Give us a thumbs up, comment below. As always, we'd love to hear your suggestions. So if you guys wanna learn other things or you wanna see more from Kevin Gray, make sure you say below and we'll do as much as we can. Stay tuned video number two. We'll see you on the river.